thing was that after I finished my studies, there was a college in Bombay, Vitibai College, in the uh, Juhu Viliparli Development Scheme. In that, there was a, just slightly diagonally opposite to my college where I used to teach. I was 24 years old and had got a job to teach in a college. And just diagonally opposite, there was uh, Dena Bank building. Do you remember? I did a mural there. Yeah. So uh, Jatin was doing a mural on the outer wall of this Dena mosaic, Bank building with mosaic, mosaic tiles. Which doesn't exist because I have tiles and the building is broken and so the mural is gone. <laughs> yeah. So I went there of, uh, two years ago, I just passed by and I was looking for the mural and I didn't find it there. Yeah. So it is since then that I uh, know Chatin. So as he said, it's so many years, so many decades that we've known each other. Uh, I would like to ask Jatin that because he has one of the finest collections of uh, Indian folk and uh, or vernacular arts and crafts. Arts and crafts, this whole division is, uh, as he said, is something meaningless, but at the moment I can't go into that. Let's, let's stay with that term, with all its limitations. So uh, he has uh, one of the finest collections, better than major museums of arts and crafts, because museums develop through various people and people with different kind of eye towards things. Whereas this is one person's eye, which looking at it and therefore, and a fine eye, and a very discerning eye, which has put this collection together and therefore each piece has a certain quality. It's not just a jumble of lots of things. So what one could learn from that about uh, or one could have not learned, but one could have insight into things. Is and Jatin has today been very brief, but if he talks about each piece, he talks so so wonderfully about uh, about he like not he doesn't look at a thing, and this is what I'm saying. He doesn't look at a thing, but he looks into a thing. You know how it is made, the maker, the fingers, the instrument, the. Uh, the visual quality, the inner quality, relationship to broader culture of a given area, all these things come out because I have seen what he wrote and sometimes casually when he talked to me. And this is where I feel that this collection of Jatin is extraordinarily important. It's one man's collection and one right. man's... Uh, a little interruption with something to, uh, I recollect pertaining to this. Uh, there are there were artists like Hakusha, they were like uh, Mani, K.G. Subramaniam. They were also deeply interested in traditional arts and crafts and traditional forms. And yeah. that is one. The other thing is, he has been involved recently in an art center called Kalampumi in Bhubaneswar. Incidentally, 1967, I suddenly recollect uh, yesterday, because he was mentioning that he was going on 29th for the inauguration of Kalam Bhumi, something. In 1967, I was, you see, handicraft is a part of industrial department. You will be shocked to know, even in our country. You know? But we then, Mr. Patel invited me as a state guest to Orissa, and I collected handicraft of Poraput, Ganjam, Puri, uh, 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 Katak, Balasur, and Mayurban for five or six states. And I got them in a jeep like this at 2 o'clock in the morning. And let me tell you some very interesting incident. I was in the state guest house, and JP Das, the DJ and IS officer, said, you are calling the driver to have breakfast with you. I say he's given one or two rupees a day. And the breakfast is so large, he can share the breakfast. But when he's driving, if I have to come from Koraput to Bhubaneswar, at 2 in the morning, he's ready. So he was a part of the team. And all those collections must be there. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Please. So, as you mentioned, I also created a, a museum for the government of Orissa on uh, Orissan textiles and handicrafts. A couple of years ago it opened. And it has become a landmark and very important museum. But besides that, I want to come to <clears throat> certain questions that I want to ask Jatin. One is that uh, he's an art school trained artist. 
very well known artist. He doesn't like to be called, as he said, a modern artist, but he likes to be called a contemporary artist, which has uh, important differences between the. But we can't just now go into that controversy about modern or contemporary and contemporary. But what I want to ask Jadin to you is ask you is that how is it possible that on the one side you have collected these things, you enjoyed them, you perceived, you, you deal with it, and on the other side, uh, it's a longish question, so uh, before you ask me, uh, I, let me finish the question. Um, uh, I know other artists, and Jatin also mentioned just now, who had interest, may or may not have collections, but they have had extraordinary interest in folk and tribal arts, or we call them vernacular arts, or textiles or whatever, but in their own art practice, a lot of these things played a role, which uh, I wonder how is that in Jatin's work, we do not see any direct, and please note the word direct, I do not see direct uh, relationship. Now I give you a couple of names, uh, India's most important stalwarts, say Ram Kinkar Bais, or Jamini Roy, or Mrinalini Mukherjee, or Meera Mukherjee, uh, Jyoti Bhar, Prabhakar Barve, uh, K.T. Subramanyam you mentioned already, and uh, <clears throat> later on Ravinda Reddy, or uh, very recent, uh, I mean comparatively, Gauri Gill, the photographer, <laughs> who has done a uh, collaborative work with Varley, Pagel artists and things. Then uh, abroad, Francesco Clemente has done a lot of collaborative work with uh, Indian artists and folk artists and craft people. Then uh, <coughs> uh, uh, even Bharti Kher has used uh, a, a lot of uh, folk and tribal things in her work. Nirima Sheikh has done scroll paintings, which are uh, you know somehow based on storytellers' scroll paintings and things like that. So what I'm trying to say is that uh, we do not see in your work any direct relationship uh, between your such commitment and your such relationship to that for years and years. But your work is uh, apparently is uh, like these artists who I mentioned. You can see some places, like uh, uh, most obvious is German Roy, for example. But there are many others, or Francesco Clemente, for example. So I want to ask you this question, that how do you deal with these two different aesthetic currents that are flowing together, and they are flowing parallel, or they are flowing entwined? Yeah, many of these artists that he mentioned, uh, 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 many are close friends, many were students, uh, etc. And there are many are talented people in our country in every field of art and science. Um, before this, uh, I'll just give you a, a brief a second. Um, Radha Krishnan, whom I call Rad, was a close friend of mine. He was C.V. Raman's son. He was a great scientist, chief of the Science Institute, uh, Raman Institute in Bangalore. He came and uh, we have a beat artist program at JD Center of Art. For last 22 years, uninterrupted every month on a second Saturday. He came and gave a talk, and unfortunately, my dear friend is no more, was a fantastic man. He gave, came and gave a talk. He said he worked on it for two months. The inseparable relationship between art and science. Art and architecture, inseparable. Art and science, inseparable. But the colonial education system made, made it such that we are looking uh, at step brothers. You know what I mean? And art architecture, science and art is like sugar and coffee. You know? Okay. Returning back to when he's saying that although I am interested in the traditional art form, how come my work doesn't show anything of the traditional? If you, uh, if you look at my, you know, a lot of people, <coughs> Walk around my retrospective show. Uh, please take it very uh, in seriously. That that 
where they go for two minutes or half an hour and they look and they come and look at the book. My 60 years of work, this is about 40% which is on display. 60% are still in my studio. I believe me without exaggeration, I even don't know many of my works. When it was cleaned up, I was cleaning up my paintings with a wet warm cloth, uh, cloth and my conservator said, Pani nahi lagane ka. I said, mujhe maloom hai pani lagana hai. Well, I dust it off. And in this season, cleaning, conservation of painting is done in winter when it's dry. Anyway, so I, I won't go to detail, but I did it. And I was quite astonished. Some of our painting done 60 years ago, they looked fresh. Because in JJ School of Art and in Calcutta and Madras, these are three important art institutions in the country, we were taught how to prime a canvas, how to buy the cloth, how to prime the canvas. I won't go to detail because it needs uh, one day to discuss about that. And prime and then paint when it's dry. And you see, if you take a golden frame, I give this example quite often. You scrape it, under the gold there's another color. Under that there's a yellow color, etc. So today, a contemporary and a modern artist, uh, he is not contemporary, a modern artist can do what they like. An American artist says, I put it red, 20 feet painting, if it falls apart, it's the job of the conservator. That's very arrogant. And I think in our country, we, and in the Eastern world, we had the humility that if I do this, it should last long. You know, whether it's a painting or a cloth or this or building or whatever. Uh, here is the great architect Sumit Ghosh is sitting. The veranda is a part of uh, uh, tropical countries. So the direct sun and the rain do not come to the wall. And I'm quite worried about my art center. The direct sun and the rain will come to the wall. As much of insulation cavity that you make. Anyway, that's gone. But what I'm saying, if you clothe my figures and put the ornamentation in your mind, eh? like, kya bolte, kya film bola? Kya? Uh, your film, what's the word? Uh, animation. 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 Okay? Then you will see the rhythm of the figure are born out of this context. The rhythm of the figure. Yeah. But apparently doesn't show. My figures are bare figures. <coughs> and a lot of people call them nudes. Nude is somebody who's clothed and unclothing for a photographer uh, or, uh, you know, <laughs> but uh, the bear, all our sculptures are bear figures all over the country. And this is a unique country where a sculpture is turning as if she's going to move and a half smile. This kind of thing do not exist anywhere in the, in the Western world. And I'm enamored not because I'm flying the flag of India. I'm enamored by this, the poetic, rhythmic, gestures of a figuration or the craft and nobody shows off. Would you, somebody asked me, are you involved in creative activity? I said, hey, I'm working. You know, all these high sounding words are used. You know, in front of a traditional artist, method to I'm nobody. And I, this is why <laughs> I've written to be an artist in you know, Dotin Janam, you know? And, and uh, 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 without, without any flattery or arrogance, I wrote in all my brochures in 50, 60, 70, I'm a painter on to become an artist. So when he's talking about he's not finding the, the uh, not Indian ness, <coughs> but the Indian uh, aroma, the Indian rhythm, the Indian flavor in my work is, is there in my own way. I never explain my painting to anybody. Please go ahead. Uh, the point I was making was that how you are able to keep these two streams uh, running parallel, but not often entwined. I give an example. Uh, let me take an example of an artist on whom I've been writing for a long time and writing a book. It's uh, Francesco Clemente. His work is Odessa a lot. 
Now, um, he's a very internationally known artist, lives in New York, and uh, he's collected in many places, but he works a lot in India. I want to give an example from Clemente's uh, method of working. Once he told me something extremely interesting. Uh, he collaborates with uh, Indian folk artists and craftspeople and things like that. And what he does is that, uh, at least in some of his work, what he did was that he made two drawings. The drawings may relate to Greek mythology, Christian uh, subjects or things, or his personal thinking, poetry, which is very well. These a few drawings he made, then he gives them to uh, another artist, uh, a folk artist, and doesn't say anything about the background, but the drawings themselves speak a little bit. He says that you look at them and do what you like with them. And he has done a whole series of painting story of my country, uh, about uh, 36 paintings. And these were done by an Odia uh, painter uh, in collaboration with Clemente. About Cle what he said to me about uh, this collaboration has never left my mind. He says, and please listen to what I'm saying, it's an extraordinary conversation that I had with him. He says when, you, when an artist sits in front of an empty canvas, white empty space in front of the artist, <coughs> and he starts doing work, either at the point when he starts, or at the time when he's half done somewhere, also applies to writers, and then you feel that you are predictable to yourself, in the sense that you, more or less you feel which direction you will go, because you know yourself. And this predictability of yourself, and predictability as such, to get rid of that predictability, he says, when I do collaboration, and he learned this collaboration from his guru, uh, another Ita very famous Italian artist before him, called Alighiero Boetti. So Boetti used to go to Afghanistan, and he used to bring some drawn maps, and give them to uh, uh, Afghan women to embroider. These maps were world maps, but the geographies would collapse. So river Ganga might be flowing towards Italy or things like that in his own imagination and his, his connection with India. So these, these two things, he, what he was doing and the women who were embroidering and interpreting or his drawings which were interpreted by uh, Oriya uh, painters, what came was, or what, what came out was loss of that predictability. You know, otherwise, you do the same thing for, 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 for decades, you do some kind of work, and you finish the work as you have been finishing. Writers do the same, but you know, they start and then. I am saying that I am asking that in this difficult question that uh, isn't there a 